Today's automotive engines, whether petrol or diesel, contain anything up to 200 separate moving parts. They're made to sustain heavy loads and run at high speeds over long periods. And we expect them to go on working year in, year out, in all conditions. How well they succeed depends ultimately on good lubrication, on the complex blend of ingredients that goes into the making of a modern, high-quality engine oil. the lifeblood of an engine. It allows the working surfaces to move freely. But that's far from all it does. It has to work in a hostile environment. Heat, pressure and the products of combustion all threaten to reduce its lubricating efficiency. How well an oil withstands such adverse conditions depends, in the first place, on the choice of a suitable base. The main source of automotive lubricants is mineral oils distilled from crude petroleum. They are readily available and offer the wide range of properties that are needed. Slightly alkaline, not too volatile, and with most of its wax removed, the suitability of a base oil is determined largely by its viscosity, its rate of flow. At low temperatures, for instance, some oils become too sluggish. Others, when they're hot, run too thin. What's needed is a selection of oils from which a base lubricant can be blended that will function equally well at different temperatures. Thin enough to give easy starting in cold weather. At the same time, thick enough to maintain good lubrication when running hot. A vitally important part of the oil's job is to absorb heat and carry it away from the working parts. So, from the sump, the oil is pumped to every part of the engine. Splashed round the timing gear. Delivered through jets onto cams and followers to flow over the valve train. Squirted into piston undercrowns to splash around gudgeon pins and onto cylinder walls. And through oilways in the crankshaft to reach the main and big end bearings. Without this continuous and liberal supply of oil, the moving parts would overheat, wear and seize up. Take a closer look at a typical working surface. Under the electron microscope, it shows up as a series of jagged peaks and valleys. It's the oil's job to keep metal surfaces like these from touching each other. If the film of oil between them gets too thin, the peaks will rub against each other, weld, and tear apart. 
Paradoxically, this kind of wear is more likely to happen at slow speeds than fast. This model shows why. A moving belt and a plate floating close above it are kept apart by a film of oil. As the speed increases, the oil is drawn into the space between them, forcing them further apart. The tubes register the pressure exerted by the oil. The higher the speed, the greater the pressure, and the thicker the film of oil. When the speed drops, the pressure falls and the oil film gets thinner. But if a load is now applied, it forces oil out from between the working surfaces. The gap between them narrows to the point where the oil film may actually rupture. This becomes critical whenever speed is low and the load is relatively high, as for instance in stopping and starting. It occurs in the eccentric loading on the crankshaft bearings. In the hammer blow delivered to a piston at its moment of rest. Or in the pressure of a cam working against a stiffly sprung follower. Repeated rupturing of the oil film results in progressively serious damage and eventual failure. No base oil by itself can prevent this kind of wear. It's dealt with by improving the viscosity range of the lubricant. 